I guess my love for the beats and for the super producers and how everything was made for me. It was just the creativity that came from this era, I think was unmatched. Down the rabbit hole podcast, take 10. We're back. We're back, baby. We're back <laughs> after three months hiatus, man. I love the hiatus. <laughs> man, I just got burnt out. What about you? Uh, well, I had some medical problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Just, you know, it's how it is, you know. Sometimes you just got to take some time off. Look, we're back. We're back. I'm going to figure out how to get... Uh, I'm going to get get motivated at the back end of this year, get more podcasts, get more content going on. Got a lot mate, of vlogs. Get the gear going, mate. You, get, just like, gotta, gotta, you gotta, haven't used it for a while. Got to like, get on the gear. Okay. Crying for it's help. Crying for, for, for this. Look at this. For it to be used, man. I'm okay. loving the mustache, by the way. Loving the porn stash? Uh, yeah, Everyone a, loves it. I'm telling uh, you. It's, it's uh, suiting you, actually. It's yeah, very it's, Mexican. It's, it's very say. like, I'm, I'm getting to my taco making roots. Yeah. You know I know. What I mean? <laughs> Anyway, look, look, we've got a really fun concept today. Today is a bit of a fun episode, you know, just, just just getting us back into the groove of things. We've actually recorded an episode like this before, and lo and behold, the sound didn't come through. And I'm, I'm checking. Well, that out. was the first time using the roadcaster, so yes. we were, yeah, we were, just we were still just getting used to bumbling our way through. Yeah. But anyway, look, we're going to share you through our top five songs of the 2000s to 2010s. Nice. Which is a tall order to ask to condense. All like your best songs, five to pick five songs in that you know decade, but effectively. What an era! I mean, I this this era was top of the top in terms of music of quality. Um, you know, I've always just thought about it recently as well, mm. like because a lot of the time, like a lot of people from our age, they look back at that with like rose tinted glasses, and you know, is it Still is do. it bigger than is it just nostalgia, right? Yep. Or is it there? Or was there something great in that era? And I, I'm he believing that there was something great i think yeah no you're right like i mean we'll, we'll talk about why we like these songs and why we pick these songs but i think you're great just to give you a bit of context so sumit and i met during high school we instantly clicked over the genre of music and the genre of music you will find that a lot of our songs if not all of them are are in you know 90s hip-hop r&b uh to which that was the golden decade, 90s and early 2000s, right? Yeah. Like early to mid, whatever you want to call 2010. Yeah. So look, let's get into it. But before we get into it, here are the rules of the game. We're going to talk about our top five songs and then our three notable mentions that didn't make the cut. But again, before we do it, how would you describe your taste in like RM? Like what, what, what would you say? Because I've got a categorization of like what um, I like listening to. I'm more- Do you like the fast, like, like what, what sort so of stuff? So during that era, like, I was very much into like the hip hop of it all. Yeah. Right. And maybe because, you know, just how I am by nature, I'm very like creative and I always looked into music as well. Mm. Um, I was more into the producers of the time. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of my list reflects that. I'm really keen to yeah. see a list because we have <laughs> a lot like, of intersections of songs that we like, but you've yeah, claimed like, that we're not going to have the same one. It does sort of, yeah, there's, there's cross pollination of our songs that we do yeah. like, but. My logic for my list, a lot of it comes from the fact that I'm a massive fan of the super producers of that era. And that was the era for super producers. Yeah, that was. That was the. So if you don't have Timberland there, they'll, they'll be very. <laughs> Man, the Timberlands, yeah. uh, the Dre, uh, Dr. Dre, yeah, yeah, uh, okay. yeah, Pharrell, um, they were just popping off. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was another level of music because of those guys. Like they really. I reckon they were iconic. Um, the beats were iconic in that era. Um, that really made that era for me. Yeah, it was um, like, yeah. and so we're yeah, we're close like, to our because like stars you can get here. And like, yeah. yeah, I mean, there, there's a you know big sort of you know cycle of stars that come through through you know the business and go out, but that era just it was defined by these super producers out, trying to outdo each other. Yeah. So for me, in terms of like my thought process of how I picked it, look, I've always been a slow jams guy. Like yeah. that's always, always has been me. I've, I've liked the melodic, I've loved the rhythm in rhythm and blues. Like I've always liked that. And I think just to contextualize it, Sumit and I are Gen Y, which means that a lot of these songs, how I see it, uh, view it rather, they were the soundtrack of our childhood yeah. and our soundtrack of that period of when we were you know in high school which is you know a lot of high school stuff yeah. you know your romances all that all that sort of <laughs> st no it is it's, I, I view it as the soundtrack to my high school and that was very vividly that anyway so look let's start let's start with you mate give me your number one a notable mention that did not make the list 
Okay, okay so I've got there's three of these honorable mentions. Okay, so do just do one at a time. And I'll do the first one. Yep. Uh, so for me, the first one is Stand Up by Ludacris. Stand up. <laughs> when, uh, now again, Luda to me Luda was Luda on era. fire in this era. He yes. like the songs that he was making. He was um, on fire. They were just so different to anything else that had come before it. Mm. Um, straight away, you can tell with the, like with a Luda song, you can tell. That's a Luda song, straight when away. When I move, you the beat, move. Um, yeah. his flow, his melody, like everything about him. Uh, a lot of the beats, some, a lot of the times was from Timberland as well. Like with Luda mm. did, uh, um, <coughs> you know, uh, collaborate with Timberland a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Luda, man. Shout out DTP, man. What's up? I don't have a single Ludacris <laughs> song, but yes, yes. I do. do you remember the video clip of it too? That's, that's the thing, the big Watching hand. Watching video clip. Yeah, yeah, the hair, that's the really, aesthetic. Like, so that's sort of the stuff that plays, like, like the creativeness. That's the nostalgia in it. The creativeness of it, like just like the, ma- like <laughs> what is he doing in that video? I, I have no idea. He's got this massive hand, <laughs> like uh, it's just sort of going around. Like it's just. That was yeah, great. That uh, was Ludacris. one of the, the great songs. Uh, Ludacris stand yeah. up, and I remember actually vividly remember even uh, back in the day. Remember when we had a uh, like the Nokia phones, and then you had to di- like Sick. you had to look on the internet what was the code to for get the, your for ring the ringtone. Tone. The ringtone stand up was my first ringtone. Really, it was hundred percent polyphonic ringtone. <laughs> polyphonic. Remember ring when that was a thing? I just care about snake. Yeah, like snake. Gen Z had no idea what the fuck we're talking about. But oh, like, yeah. shit, we're already starting the show. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> So look, my number one, I had to get Nelly in. And Nelly isn't even in my top five, so it's gotta be hot in here. Come on, when that that is like that, your quintessential <laughs> clubbing like even when you're like getting ready, it's like it's good and oh And again, what a beat from Pharrell. What a beat. It's it's just insane. Dude, that me. song now stands the test of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, uh, like n- Nelly country country grammar. Like that that like to be honest, I loved a lot of songs in that album. Yeah. But you, this is a classic. Like. Well, Nelly, when Nelly came, like came onto the scene, yeah. EI, country grammar. EI, man. He just, just burst onto the scene, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and you're right. That album had just banger after banger after banger. And it was just in, like hot in here was the, the you know, accumulation yeah. of all oh, these hits. Yeah, he is, was on a roll like, like no other. It was that iconic... It's just that beginning, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. When you hear that beginning, remember the Crush School discos, man? <laughs> <laughs> when you when you hear uh, like it's starting, you know, and yeah, you're no, like, you're getting genius. I know this song, man. This is my jam. Well, the since they started, right? Uh, but then when the beat just kicks off, mate, that's what they're missing now. It's, it's just, I mean, you nah, it's not the same. What's well, the thing? A lot of if you look at a lot of the music now, a lot of them are using those beats from back then. <laughs> It's true. Like there's a, they're, they're rapping over it, and a lot of the Gen Z don't know that there was like nah, you know, that's that, an old that's, beat. <laughs> that's that's prime Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but hot love hip hop, Helly. What a song! Great song. Here. All right, what you got? What's your next one? And this very close to being my top five, but just oh, missed out. Shit. Honorable mention is "Get Low" by So <laughs> <Little John. laughs> Now yeah. what a song! Now, little John defined, had to be in the. I didn't this have to me defined John. an era in uh, in hip hop where, like, it was the the evolution of hip hop was going, and then he comes, little John, with this crunk sound, crunk, which was just. Say, yeah. I mean, he started with with yeah. We started with this, it and then great. with yeah, and then like it just his style of uh, the the beats that were were being produced by him. Um, this the the base the bases were unlike anything else. The eight oh eights they yeah, were yeah. just, mate. We used to like start earthquakes with this. <laughs> like, you remember back in, in the, the day, when, like having subwoofers. Oh my god, subwoofers so in the car. Lame. This was the reason why they sold the yeah, subwoofers. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. this song, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. I I don't have a. This is tough. Like when you have to condense it to five. So you'll see my notable mentions. I don't have any of the same artists up there apart from one, which is yeah. like one of my goat artists. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Lil John, you had to great song. Yeah, I mean, great song and started. It started an era. I reckon. I remember this playing, hearing the song "Need for Speed." You remember yes, it? Need, Need for Speed Underground. Underground. Need for Speed became, Underground became iconic with that as well, dude. This- so actually, during that time, so many, oh, I have one song here which is pretty obtuse, but you'll know it is is from video games and the that's nostalgia right. from playing that's video a, games. That's the thing. Everything about that era, like the music, it just permeated through everything. Soundtrack games, bro. TV shows, movies. Like it was all just encapsulated. It was just so great, I reckon that. Because like 
the 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 music that you would hear, like the things that you get influenced from, would come from all these movies. That's true. And games. And That's like, true. Like it's just, yeah, it was incredible to me. And get low, what a song! What a song! What a, what a song. song! Okay, look, top five didn't make the list. Honorable mention. I had to have an Usher song. I don't have an Usher song in my top five, and it's not yet. It's my boo. It's my boo with Alicia Keys. Listen, I'm a slow jazz guy. I was like, that was huge. That was a huge song. That was a huge song. That was a yes, huge was, song. Are you was, kidding me? It was massive. The girls loved it. So you loved it. The as guys well. liked it. All right. The guys. I'm sensitive, man. I'm sensitive. I'm, Scor- I thought you were I'm about, Scorpio, man. I thought I was Scorpio. so sure. I know that. you want it. Yeah. See, no, no, no. I, I thought you were going to say you got it bad. Oh, man. That, that's, I thought that's, that, that, was, yeah. look, that was a massive song look, as well. Look, all. That Usher period, I think you can do it. You can, we can redo this time period and just say pick R and B only, which is worthy on its own because there were so many good R and B songs. Usher would dominate that period. Yeah. Oh Usher my god. But 100%. like, look, you got to know that Alicia Keys was at her power during this time too. Yeah, yeah. So this is a power duet in the 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 the, the biggest uh, in its truest form, right? Like yeah. when these two guys did it. They were. I can't. What year was uh, my boo? This, like this yeah. song, I remember broke a lot of records. It was so huge. It was Be- massive because yeah, release is two thousand and four, and Diary of Alicia Keys and Confession. So that's these yeah. are two of the yeah. biggest albums of all time yeah. for R and B. So like, I don't think it can be understated. And like, if you had any level of a you know, high school romance or anything like that was, it was a soundtrack. Look, I had to put it there. Mm-hmm. I had to put it there because my girl Alicia, she had to be in there. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Girl Alicia. My girl Alicia. <laughs> so. Get a brother up. No. Just joking. Just joking. Oh, shoot. Um, what you got? So from that really romantic song, romantic, we go yeah. to another romantic song. Oh, here we go. It must be. So this just missed my top five. Mm. Light your ass on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Buster the rhyme. Buster Bust rhyme. rhymes and Pharrell with the beat. That look, bro. Only Buster this rhymes. This is such a left field. It song. is left field, mate. And it's it. So it probably like for a lot of people doesn't fit. I don't. In, I can't remember. What, what does it go like? So uh, like this is honorable mention. Yeah. So, but I I don't know if you remember this. I was a massive Pharrell fan. Oh yeah, yeah. I I'm, was, I'm actually shocked that I don't have a Pharrell. And I mean, I've got. Pharrell. I was just like. I was more sort of a fan of Pharrell, the producer. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. beats that he was making. Oh, it was for me, like Tim Land's great, Dre's great, but Pharrell was just making like things that just oh, like stood very the test of, unique, just complete, sounds, very yeah. unique, completely like, different to anything. And that's what that's why a lot of artists like they would go to Pharrell looking for something just completely unique because that era was a lot of artists were just trying to outdo each other creatively, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And Pharrell is the best at that. And Dude, to me, I, like this this song is nuts. And this is why I have it here, because like it's just crazy. The beats out of its out of this world doesn't sound like anything else. And we got Bust on. There couldn't be anyone else other than Bust on this song, I reckon. They wouldn't do it justice. Buster, man. Bust on is just I don't know, what is he's just going crazy in the video as well. Like so, I, know, I love this. So here's the thing. We've got like multiple artists and I think that's like, I mean, every decade, every period of music has like, obviously a lot of different artists that encompass it. But I think the, the depth and the quality of depth, if you do like, if we, we're going to do a power rankings on this, yeah. that period, like these are like, like legit superstars, right? Well, like, this is an interesting period, right? So gangster rap has, Sort of fallen di- like down the wayside. Which we a need to bit, talk right? about that period, but yeah, yeah. But it, like during the late nineties, mm. uh, Dr. Dre nearly went broke. Yeah, this is a very like this has been told like numerous times, and he was trying to do that same like early nineties style NWA yeah, and all that yeah. sort of stuff, and that had just it not changed. worked. It, it changed. It, it, it wasn't. Moved, yeah, the industry moved moved beyond that, right? Mm. Um, so it forced a lot of these guys, like a lot of these producers and a lot of these artists. To innovate. Yeah. That's how we got people like Eminem. And that's how we got people like Pharrell. That's how we mm. got people like Busta Rhymes. Because <coughs> they were just completely different. And this is what encapsulated this era was they were so creatively creatively different that at one point they were trying to outdo each other. Yeah. And <clears throat> to be the number one guy, right? Yeah. At yeah, the yeah, top. Yeah. And because of that, it just it just sort of became this magnet. Mm-hmm. Oh, like yeah. The industry became this magnet for all these really creative people to come and just try to be a part of it and outdo each other. Yeah, and that's yeah. why you got the depth. That's why you've got like depth so many good. people, the depth of artists, 
um, the depth of talent, it was just insane at that I th- point. I think also when I really think about that time, like you said, the gangster rap was its whole time, right? Yeah. Um, and obviously it's still, these are all American artists, right? Yeah. Actually, have we got a non-American artist here? <laughs> no, <laughs> probably not. Um, but uh, what I'm saying is like, when we think about it, it was the production, it was the musicality of it. It's not that I remember amazing like lyrics. I don't. I no, actually no, don't. No. But but like I think yeah, these sounds were so different. Yeah, and they were very the sonics of the sound. It was, was just something. Else. It was very distinctive. Uh, the the mastering of the sound, the mastering of the beats. They were just uh, they were like never experienced, right? Definitely. Um, yeah. And like you know, we hear actually we've heard like in documentaries, Jimmy Iving mm. even talk about like when he first heard Dre. Mm. Like it was just unlike anything he's ever heard. Yeah, and he's had a storied career with like you know rock stars and all that sort of stuff. And he heard Dre's sort of mastering and audio, and it was just like this is unlike anything else. And that's what was happening throughout this era. Like these super producers were just going nuts. Good song, good song. All right, so my rounding up my notable mentions is a Kanye song. Here. Oh. It's a Kanye song. Yeah. It's got to be slow jams, man. That, that, <laughs> of course. That, that, <laughs> I expected this. <laughs> oh, oh, Twister. Oh, that, that was bad. Kanye. I remember That's you Kanye's. Sing, I remember you singing this uh, in high school. Actually. <laughs> slow jams, man. Yeah. When slow jam starts, it doesn't sound like a 90s song. Well, it kind of does now yeah. if you think about it. But that was the, I mean, that was Kanye's introduction, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It nah, was through the line. wire was his introduction, but like, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. him going to the, the next level. Yeah. Breaking through mainstream. This is a mad song, but this song it was forever punctuated by the introduction of Twister. That that was it. Like, to me, uh, like, Kanye, the Kanye artist. bit was good, but when I you hear Twister's bit, it's like, what who is artist. this guy? What an artist, Twister. We haven't heard, like, much. Overnight Celebrity, he very, like. He was very much encapsulated in that era. Yeah, he didn't he go was. beyond that. It, it, right? it, it was for, like, a brief period of songs. Yeah. But he, he came, And he, he was, he was, like, really, like, the way he was rapping was. Oh, it was great. Treading on some shoes, maybe Buster's shoes, right? It was great. <laughs> I remember. Uh, no, he like, was just so good. Great song. Okay. Now's the time. Top five. Okay. Is yours in order of preference? Because I couldn't quite nail that. So mine's is, yeah, my mine's. number one is definitely my number one, but I wouldn't say it's, is yours in order? Yeah, yours yeah. in order? All right, go on. Okay, so from <coughs> number five. Number five. <clears throat> and this, I guess, started my obsession with Pharrell. Oh, yeah. Rockstar. Any oh, idea? yeah. What a song. But which one? The original or the, the faster one? Because there's different <laughs> versions of it. Is, is there not? No, the, you have the, the original. original. Right? I like the which original. is a little bit slower, yeah, a right? little bit. And that, that's sort of just me. I, I don't like when they try to fasten up songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I like the original. Uh, it's just the guitar riffs and yeah, 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 mate. This is this is what an intro to Pharrell and NERD as well. Um, you, the this is someone who successfully merged rock and rap, mm-hmm. and he's just made it cool. This whole video is cool. All the you know the the cameos in the video. Um, it's just, it's just something I think of its time as well, right? Very much of that early two thousands, and um, and I don't know, just just something very rebellious about this song. It really gets you, uh, you know, just like even if you're going through the gym, even like if it just mm. really gets you in that you know, focus, you know. It's but like for me, it's just there's an there's an you know there's this angst in this song as well a little bit, you know. That's what I like. Oh, I like um, I liked it. I, I do like the faster one, uh, yeah. but th- yeah, I think. Uh, the mastery for real is in full effect. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I don't ha- didn't have front. End. But like again, Ooh. like that that wasn't a good song too. But like yeah, again, yeah. when you think of these songs, they have very um. You know how they say every pop record on radio you can play with like five chords, yeah. like the GC, like yeah. all that. You can't do that with Pharrell's no, songs. No, no. So can't. it's like he goes out of his way to produce very obtuse sound and yeah, like. Yeah. This version, this one, Rockstar, specifically the, the original version that you talk about, yeah. has a very offbeat tempo. Yeah, it's very yeah, hard yeah. to explain, yeah, right? Like it's, yeah, it's unique. It's it, like your, well, the, it commands the, attention, like sonic attention. How the drums come yeah, in, yeah, how yeah. the, like the guitar riff goes, and then how he starts rapping. He's definitely like fucking triple, I mean, you can't dance, but like, <laughs> like <laughs> it's triple, he's like generally talented if you think of how. Yeah. And this is, this is a really great, like, I mean, lap dance is, the intro, right? This is what that's where lap. That's where he, dance, that's where he yeah, yeah. got off. But to me, this is like he's sort of is coming out party, right? Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah, this yeah. is where he's just like, mate, 
this is me. It's like the attitude he has in that video. Sick. Yeah, it's just sick. No, nah, good song, good song. All right, my number five in my top five list of 2000 to 2010. You gotta get G Unit there, and for me, it's. Not even the most well-known G in the song. This is this is definitely for me. It's one I get to know you. I, oh, I love that song. That, that I love that song. Honestly, like every a lot time of people have slept on that song. That's a that's a banger that's, song. Yeah, it's a banger of a song. And like, there's two re- reasons. One is like, I like the slow jam. So I like the. Yeah. I really like melodic rap. Like, and I think that period was perfect for it. There's maybe a little after that where you had like the Umarions and that yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. took it. Yeah. But like G unit. I mean, G-Unit, Stunt 101, all that, it was hard, yeah? Yeah. So when they came with- That uh, was different. That's different. But when you went to, I want to get to know you, oh man, like, I love that video clip. Every time I play, like- It showed their their range, right? And that's what a lot of these guys were trying to do in this this era, is that, is to have complete range. Yeah. To not be stuck into one style. Yeah. Like, you know, we had even Snoop Dogg trying things different with Pharrell. Yeah. But when I get to know you, it's just the ultimate sort of- it's drive the ultimate along, Friday, you know, like, yeah. Friday drive song yeah. for me, man. Or even if you're having drinks, like yeah, yeah, if you don't yeah. want something it's too chill. hardcore, it's, so good. it's chill. And also, my vivid memory is playing GTA and then <laughs> driving, like you know, when you finish a mission, it's like this is like Miami Vice on the sunset, yes. and then I want to get to know you, oh. like, and you know, like it, like it's gonna be a good day. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, a I lot of these songs are tight for us. For me, games. definitely, definitely were. Yeah, right. Because yeah. I remember was it the Xbox. Where you can load your own music, oh, even yeah, I did that on PC. Me, yeah. The that original was GTA, so yeah. good. That was just like underrated, awesome. bro. Underrated. That's where we loaded all these songs and just like it's legally, just, legally, of course, <laughs> legally, legally, yes, yes. legally. Yeah. Uh, definitely not through Napster, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, it's my play, uh, mate, what a song! Want to get to know you? All right, what's number four for you? Now, number four for me. This is this is, I think, one of the best productions I've heard. Mm. Crimea River, Justin ooh, Timberlake. Ooh. Now, Timberland absolutely cooked with this beat. This is, I think, <coughs> close to, I think, Timberland's best beat. Really? Yeah. Wow. And this is like looking at Timberland's uh, whole. Oh, I don't know. And, oh, no. yeah, but it's very, dude, this song. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. This song was, was was crazy back in the day. It was good. What, was this JT's first song? Like one of his first singles? Uh, after no, no, no. It was, it was his first album, I believe. His first Justified, solo right? album. Justified, right? I love that. That whole album is actually an underrated yeah. album in totality. But it's just this song. And obviously the video, all the mm. stuff about Britney mm. and <laughs> Little Imprints yeah, and stuff that. like that. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it's just, I, I can't get over the beat. And I still play the beat to this song. Really? It's just. I love this beat. And, you know, obviously JT kills Song it. Song hot. JT yeah. kills it with the singing on this. Um, but for me, that beat is just, I think, yeah, one of my top beats. Uh, like I Love You is the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like that's, that's also, that's also very good. Band. It came out strong, man. Oh, man. I so remember what, that album had Like I Love You. Senorita, Rock Your Senorita, Body. Senorita, Rock Your oh. Body. She and then Cry Party, Me a River. That's a power album, man. Dude, hey, when, hey, when hey, I'm gonna put JT up, went bro. sold, dude, he really I'm went like, yeah. he, he's, I don't know whose agents were at the time or how he got these producers, but man, oh, that's it was the best album. debut album I've seen. That's up there. We need to do another one about like best debut albums. Yeah. Cause that's, that's, if you, that's going to be up one, there. One, two, three. Debut. If you have five, like, like platinum singles. That's, that's massive. That's pretty up there. But I think, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, uh, good song. I like it. I love it. And I like it. it. To me, shows your range too. And like, <laughs> hey man, I got, I got, we got yeah, a little I, bit of an R&B song in there. <laughs> listen to my voice. I'm sensitive. Pop, actually. <laughs> I, I wear New York. I'm sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> but um, mate, dude, that, that was good. It was, love that song. I like the song. I did like the song. The start was like, like what, what are we listening to? Yeah, now? what are we? I'm, listening like, to? I'm not into opera. The rain and it, like, it's just dude, not level. It's a theater. I like it. Yeah, it's theater. All right, number four. This song to me has like. Uh, like a sentimental value, like of your and I's friendship. I don't know if you remember, but I remember we were outside Mrs. Donnelly's class. Like you don't remember. This is how specific I can get. Ooh. And my memory is really good. So Miss Donnelly is business, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. And you remember I look. I was, I was on top of the trends, right? So I had <laughs> a creative. You remember Creative Muvo? Yes, yes. So that's for those who don't even know Gen Z's. That's the first um, iPod. Like cre- yes, creative created right. the MP3 yeah. players before that. Apple just made it better, yeah, right? Yeah. So I had this. You had to load manually all these damn songs, yeah, and you had to yeah. go through subroutes. <laughs> and I had 
legally obtained a the hits this single from this new artist. And his name was Chris Brown, right? Oh, no, remember you this. remember that? I remember I'm like, this. bro, bro, I remember this. you need to listen to this shit. <laughs> I know. Stop faffing around, man. You need to listen to this shit because this shit's hot. And this guy's going to make... You remember when I... Should, you run it. And I'm like... Run dur, it. Dur, dur, dur. That man. is wild. I actually remember this. You remember this. that? I, I vividly remember this. I'm telling you. This, and I know. I knew where we were. We were on the second level correct. of the balcony outside the class. This and you're is, like, listen to this. This is forever Holy one of... shoot. This is forever one of our memories. And I remember oh. that. That's what I'm saying. Music, that's like my... It's up. Yeah, because it's that's, up. That's, Holy that's, shit. You got to understand... That's such a fucking random thing to remember. It is. But it's so specific. It's because when you hear Run It, the first time you heard Run It, you're like, this is, bro, you're going to dance to this song a hundred times in your lifetime because it just felt big, And it right? was the intro for me to Chris Brown. And it that, is the intro. That, like, what an artist. Yeah, Chris yeah. Brown, just completely yeah. insane oh. at that time. And like, we're talking about debuts. Chris Brown had probably one of the best debuts. Chris Brown was... The biggest thing during that time, it was huge. Yeah. Like and like huge. That is nuts. That I can remember. I'm getting. I'm getting goosebumps. I can remember where specific. I was. No, I, I, I like it I, was business studies yeah, right outside the, the yeah. back of like area the up second floor. I remember that. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit, that's nuts. Run it. Every school disco had to have yeah. like, run. It was like yeah, you yeah, know what I mean. Yeah, it got yeah, overplayed yeah, yeah. after a while. And you're like, <laughs> I'm over it. But man, when you oh. heard it. Like there's no stronger impact you can get for, a, and that's his first single, right? Was his it? First single, yeah. Uh, the, oh. Oh, yo, excuse me, miss. No, no, no. It's his first. I'm pretty it sure running yeah, is his first. Yeah, it might be, yeah. And it just blew. Like you had people dancing to it. It's just, uh, yeah. It, it was a, a vibe. What a run Chris Brown went on. It was huge after that, right? Chris Brown was. I should there was like, there was excuse me miss you and huge um uh kiss kiss kiss, kiss yeah, t-pain all of it yeah look i Man. i had t-pain i had i'm sprung in a th in my notable and i had to yeah, kick it out yeah, but like t-pain was like autitude like that's a shout out t-pain man he is he is killing it on streaming right now <laughs> is he <laughs> i think so <laughs> he's he's trying to the evolution of T-Pain is now he's doing it without autotune, right? Yeah, yeah. He's got an okay, but it's okay. Yeah, like, he's still good. Yeah, he's whatever, said tiny disc. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Dude, you can see, man. It's sick. Sing. Like, he didn't need autotune. That was a creative device for him. He needs autotune. <laughs> <laughs> he's joking, right? You're not like your T-Pain, man. I don't like dreads, bro. But, man, uh, it, that's bro. wild that run I remember it. that. Run it, run that it. That is bro. wild. Just run it, run it. All right, what you got? What you got? What's number three? Okay, my number three. And look, dude, this... Maybe what is the biggest like for me? It's my number three because this is just how I placed it. Mm. But um, this has got to be the biggest song of this generation in the club. Oh, what? 50 Cent. oh yeah, yeah. Now, See, I had that. I took it out because I knew it was going to be insane. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. But like for me, it, it, like Dre just cooks on this beat. Oh yeah, and this there's a, a lot of even. I remember like there were there were um. They were beefing with Murder Inc. at the time, right? And there was Irv Gotti and Ja Rule. And I've, I've seen, they've done a podcast where they go, as soon as we heard like the first 10 seconds of that beat, mm -hmm. and Irv Gotti was like, yep, we're done. Oh, it's just <laughs> like, how can we compete with this? It's like, huge. That beat, and like 50 Cent at that it was huge. time. Was, 50 Cent was also fucking non like, Man, he fucking was, and like we're talking about, again, debut albums. Get Richard Die Trying. I'm sorry, oh, but that, that's got to be. Wow. That's the that's gonna be albums. placed in the Hall of Fame of that era, right? Give it should I try. Do you remember like the the album art? Even yeah. that, how cool it looked, like yeah, very much huge. of that. Era. Very much the bullet and the the, the broken <laughs> glass. Um, and no, nah, nah, that was. But in like in the club, like it was club, just man. like this is how you debut in the right? club, dude. Like I remember seeing some of the stream numbers on this thing. It was astronomical and like back then like stream numbers all right but i remember back then right mm. our sort of gauge was video hits and oh rage, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was number one in the club forever. in the club for, like on youtube for 50 cents official um thing and it's 15 years old granted 2.1 billion views you know how hard it is to get billion? Yeah. Like I've seen millions, I've seen a hundred million, but yeah. to get billion is like, I don't- yeah. It's I, a cross-generational song. Yeah, it's that's, that's, that's That's the thing of it, right? Yeah. Um, and it really made clubs doing that era. <laughs> but that, okay, but okay. Yeah. So if you think about like the songs that we're saying, yeah. this era, and it's probably like, 
goes 10 years back as well before that is the clubbing era, right? The yeah, era that you would pay money to line up to dance to these songs and you could da- do it at home if you had to. <laughs> What but, a weird but thing clubbing was. It was a weird club. It's a weird club. I mean, yeah. eat your own, mate. We, we did it. But, but yeah, like they were created for it. Like, yeah, this these are the songs that you want to. This like, I want to dance to run it. I want, yeah, like we don't have, do you, I don't know if you have, yeah, but like yeah. what I mean, it's like, like they were very dense. It's almost like that poppy R&B hip hop. But it, was, it wasn't at the same time. It wasn't poppy, but it had that commercial edge to the sound sonically. Yeah. It was just so, yeah. To me, it's the 808s that make all of these songs. You That's what makes them club songs, right? And Grey was cooking with this 808 on this one. The bass bro. is fucking insane oh, yeah, on this. Baby. And, you know, 50s flow. And it's just like, it's just gone cent, crazy. Bro. Okay. All right. So you've made me change. Change. Oh, I, I oh change. what have I done? I just changed dynamically because how can you not have. 150 cent song in like your, like yeah, to, you to, got, to, I mean I do technically you're not being it. honest if you don't right because that that era was defined okay. a lot by 50 but my 50 cent song is P.I.M. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah man not 21 questions I thought you nah, were done 21 questions I did like it but I loved many I loved the whole the whole yeah, album yeah, yeah. I love you know what my auntie calls me window shopper because she remembers <laughs> me singing it so I love a lot of it but PI, how iconic is the PIMP video clip? Yeah. Do you remember when you see that old classic white yes. iPod? Yeah. Oh. Dude. Did I like, think I got an iPod because of that? But song. that's what I mean. Yeah. That PIMP and that Snoop verse. Oh. F I F T. Oh, man. This like, is, this is where Snoop was having just reggaeton, an awesome bro. time with his career, right? Drop it like it's hot. All the stuff with Pharrell, like he was just on some something else creatively, right? Yeah. And mate, P on P, perfect. P R, nah. perfect collaboration. I don't care what people say when you when you see the video clip and isn't this white suit and yeah, all that? Yeah. It's baller, man. Yeah, that's it's a vibe. and that's that's the thing, right? Like you gotta look at the the um, production. Man, I even like Candy Shop, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now, now, now you're pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's the issue with candy shop now. <laughs> but like, we're all going to Krispy Kreme. <laughs> but you got to look at uh, like this era, the production levels of the music so video. Good. So different. Yeah, the music videos. Dude, the budget. Music they videos they now are so boring. Honestly, like, well, that's the thing, right? Boring. Because back then you used to get millions and millions for the budget for the music videos, right? Yeah. Now it's just like yeah, you've got to work with what you got and. Because record labels aren't going to give you that much anymore. Nah. You got to be creative yourself and have a vision for it. Um, but man, this like PIMP baby. The music. For Remember the the, the, the the play haters ball one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I just oh, love anything man. like those old school pimps. I loved. I that song. That's a mad song. Is a memory. That's a <laughs> that's, that's yeah. That's a memory. All right. Cat Williams was in that video too. He was, he was, man, Cat, Cat, Cat Williams. Cat Williams, brother. Oh, man, Cat. Yeah, <laughs> Shout out to Cat. <laughs> but you, you told us about the Diddy shit. Oh, oh, out, oh, oh. Oh, shit. All right, go on, go on. What's your number two? Number two. We're getting, like, look. We're um, getting, we're getting close. I had to have Eminem on this list. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because he's yeah. very much of this era. Yeah. And for me, I guess the song that really defined a lot of this era is Stan. Yeah. So Stan, Ooh. Eminem featuring Dido. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, it was, again, a really great production. Yep. And but for me, what really, like, because to me, you, like, the song's great and it's v- it's very well done. Mm. And, you know, obviously, it's uh, it sampled Dido and, like, that is in the music video as well. So mm. <laughs> you got her there as well. But because um, this is actually a sample of a, a different Dido song. Um, I don't know if you know that yeah, at the time. Yeah. But, um for me, the music video is just insane. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right? it was. It's like a movie for me, right? Like yep. it was just shot so. I actually well. can't remember. I remember the lot, the back, the the car bit. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, um, but it's just it it this plays a it shows a lot of Eminem actually in this, and um, because mm. obviously there's like the crazy side of Eminem, you know, with like yeah, my name is and all that sort of stuff, which he burst onto the scene with right mm. um but this was eminem has like these two sides he has the crazy side and he has this really sort of uh emotional side to him mm. as well like you know he's really like you know very serious and he's yeah you know, yeah and this is like sort of 
he's meshed both of them into this one song. Yeah. It's like this crazy fan he talks about and like, yeah, the seriousness. Generally, this is your number two song. You, you like Stan that much? Yeah, I like this song. Yeah, I, I just, I like it because it shows, it showcases Eminem's, yeah. all of his depth, all of yeah, his yeah. range. Um, and look, there are other banger songs I love. I, like for me, I remember in high school rapping to uh, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no no! no. <laughs> like I can't believe recess, it. I remember a recess. Yeah, I, used, I love. Super- I knew yeah. the lyrics to every yeah, single dude. like word of Superman. Oh, Eminem, yeah. Uh, without me, all that sort of stuff. That era was this crazy. Is a but thing. Stand yeah. for me yeah. is and this. I remember this song being number one on video hits for oh. a long time, like yeah. ages. And yeah. you know, it's it's the best of Eminem. Oh yeah, yeah. Like um, yeah. This song is like one of those songs where you have to. Yeah, I know you like the video clip, but I love listening to it because it's like poetry. Because yeah. the way he enunciates his voice and yeah, goes, yeah. like, it's actually like, that's like triple threat within music. Like, you yeah. have someone that's orating, yeah. rapping, singing. Like, it, it was, po- yeah, he's, it's he's a very uh, creative well, song. I think he's narrating it from his point of view, but yeah, then yeah. he's also acting like. But the just fan. think about, like, how do you even think of that? Yeah, like, it's just fucking that? random. It's that's really the, random. That's why. That's why it's our. Yeah. It's one of his best songs because the genius of that. I agree. Oh, how do you think that? Right? How do you come up with that bullshit? I agree. <laughs> that's insane to me. I agree. <laughs> I agree. All right. So my number two. Ooh. Here at NYC, we ain't nothing but the hits. Nothing but the hits. Nothing but the motherfucking hits. You don't remember that? Ja Rule, man, always on time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, you just said, oh, this is sacrilege. Man. You said a 50 cent and then a jar rule on top of him. Man, 50 not going to like that. People act all hard, you know. They were all listening to Ja Rule back in the day. They were before 50. They were. They were. Yeah. Like 100% were. Um, but Everyone's favorite microwave. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? He got the girl. He's married to his shot team now. He, he got it, man. Like, he, he got the girl. He, he, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're still shocked. <laughs> I'm still shocked Ja Rule's number two. What the freaking hell, man? Okay, always on time, great. But maybe number five. Or number two, that's really high, man. Yeah, look, it is high. It is high. My body is fucking up with me. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, look. I think... Jaro had a lot of with Ashanti. That's oh, that. That's yeah. that's the thing, right? He probably has like the um, the record for doing the most. Like he sings with the same. Which <laughs> is all Ashanti. It is all Ashanti, actually. That's real, right? Ashanti was huge. She was huge yeah. back in the day as well. I remember that. And yeah, I mean, like Ashanti. Um, was Ashanti more nineties? Like in her debut. Yeah, I think so. But she was there. Yeah, she all, was all there. All the time. Yeah. The fact that they're together is not that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get it. I didn't, I didn't get it. <laughs> I mean, Ashanti was beautiful. Like, a beautiful woman. And, like, Jar's Jar's Jar. Like, you know, <laughs> Jar, great. You know, great stuff. Like, you know. Thug Lovin', bro. Thug Lovin', but, like, um, he's a little bit of a short king, isn't he? <laughs> what you trying to say, bro? A little bit. I, I don't know. It's like, I got nothing against Jazz. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, nah, man. Like, look, man. Jazz was Jazz had his time, and you know that that was the, that was the time where yeah yeah he was up there with like there, there was a reason why Fifty Cent and him were beefing, right? Because Fifty was coming up. Jazz at the time had a lot of hits. I think yeah. I think Jazz like, is a poster boy for that. Fifty was coming for that number one spot, man. Crooner rap R, crooner rap R and B kind of vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah crooner is a word. Like that's an interesting way to describe. It's just, but it is right. Yeah, like no, that's that, what it is, though. That's like, what always on time crooner is. Ra- <laughs> crooner rap. Uh, talking weird. Yeah, but he had that niche. And he, I love Thug Loving too, man. <laughs> no, you are getting dark. <laughs> Jamming with me. Thug Loving. Thug Loving, right? <laughs> nah. It, I like Ja, man. No, Ja's good. Like, Ja had his time. Okay. You, but you're right. Maybe number two. Maybe, maybe, two's maybe, a bit high. Two's maybe, I'm, just maybe I'm sipping some cognac. I'm just saying, two, two's a little bit high. A little bit high for me. All right. What's your number one, bro? Right, my number, number one. one. She's playing games, bro. And this will always stay as my number one. Oh, shit. Um, mainly because of the vivid memory that I have when this was my first CD uh, single I've ever bought. Oh, shit. Which at is? At the time. 
And okay, before you say, you know what my first CD was? What? Craig David, bro. Yes, I think I remember you saying that to me, actually. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but, sorry, sorry. For me, Hijack. my first, the first single I ever bought, the first CD I ever bought. You bought a single? Yeah, you didn't even buy an album? Yeah, that was sort of Indian album. are you? That's not No, that's because like expensive. at the time, bro, like this just, I could not get this out of my head. Okay. Um, I still cannot. And for me, get your freak on Missy Elliott. Oh, I need, uh, actually, no, for I me, didn't Because it's the memories I have with that song. You just right? like it because it's got an Indian intro, bro. Yeah. No, <laughs> dude, the beat. Bro, good. Timberland is cooking. This is number one for you. This is number one wow. for me. And like, this is why I said, like, my <laughs> logic <laughs> is different to a lot, lot of, of course, other of logic. And this is my personal taste, man. This is my personal of course, list. Yeah. For me, it's the, you know, Missy as you Elliot, said, like, like, when I first heard this, unlike anything else yeah. out there, um, the Indian, yes, the shout out to the Indian beat there, mm. but like it's Timberland just, beat, bro. He's just cooking on this, and Timberland, man, he did have a lot of Indian sounding beats, but this is yeah, the I think he actually pioneered one. it. Like he pioneered that yeah. sort of style, but this was just on another level, man. Like this is like to me the way he he layered this song, the like the the way that the the chords and everything just comes together in a really good way and it's just man missy for me it was i mean yeah. like look for me missy is one of the top artists i love all of her songs um at the time and yeah a lot of people didn't understand why i liked missy <laughs> at the time they're like well, why her but like for me no, but, th- but this song is the creativity that missy brought hot. to hip-hop yeah, yeah i think sort of fueled a lot of this era era as well of hip-hop yeah i mean missy the music was... videos her music videos are out there <laughs> Hell, yeah, right? yeah. A bit of, of Alice in Wonderland Remember shit. that music video for She's a yeah, B? <laughs> that, that was yeah, that was out there, but this was even more out there with the spitting the you know, the, the mouth and all that. Like, hey man, <laughs> Missy Elliott, For My People. Oh. The, the, one of those dance remixes. Yeah, oh. this is For My People. Uh, well, uh, but man, dude, get your freak on for Dicey me. stories. And get your freak on. I it just... Loose control. It started my love affair with hip hop. Really? Yeah, it did. Yeah, wow. like what? Like it started my obsession with hip hop. Yeah, right. Right, and and the beats, and like more into going down on the on, onto the beats and down that rabbit hole for me at that age. Right. Yeah. I'm like, who made this? What is this? Like, what? what how do they make this? Like, oh my god! Like they make it like this. Like mm. this is how they make. Like, and to me, that just started my fascination. Um, you know, it started my creativity. Like mm. for me, it was just this is pivotal for me at that age. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was, that's why it was the first CD I've ever bought. Um, really, and yeah, it's, I I love this song, and it will always be with me. And I'll probably have this buried with me, with like like <laughs> the single, just like <laughs> just, yeah, put, it, yeah, put it on a CD, and you know, somehow buy it somehow, and put no, it in it was my a great, it was a great song. It's a great song. Again, all these songs are just such mad, like. Songs to like dance to, like yeah, songs. and get your freak on was a banger in the club as well. Um, it was just they play, they they still play it, and it recently got like used, sampled in uh, by an artist as well. I forgot his name. Really? Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Um, he they used the beat. That, that's that's what's happening a lot. Like all these crazy ass beats, bro. Generally, these, uh, I'm into country now, bro. I don't listen. To that well, shit. I've got to. We've got to talk about it after. But <laughs> I can't listen I can't listen to any of this shit <laughs> anymore. No, no, the new stuff. Yeah, no. Nah, get nah. your freak on for me, number one, all time. So good. It started my obsession <coughs> with hip hop, and mate, yeah. that's that's what it was for me. No, so good, so good. All right, my number one. You know my number one, man. You know my number one. I think I do. You know my number one. Yeah. You know it's got to be Kanye. Yeah. You know it's got to <laughs> be flashing light. <laughs> 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 Flashing Lights, man. Flashing Lights. Graduation was such this, a good this album. Is flashing this, is, this is such a song. It's such I a song. song. Flashing Lights is like, and that's why I said, like, for us, it's it's so different, right? Like, these Flashing Lights is not a big song by virtue of, like, in fact, most all the songs prior to that are bigger songs yeah, yeah. by virtue of streams. That, but, but for me, it's like, it's such a unique sound, like, with the synths and all. It's yeah. such a mood. It was such a moody song as well. Can't remember. And this, why, but like this, this was on my list, yeah. but I had to take it out. Yeah, yeah, I love this song on both lists. Honorable mentions that, but like for me, flashing lights was you're right a mood. There's an ambience to it. There's, yeah. but to me, it's also like this is Kanye, right? Like this. Yeah. Th- this is this is the first sort of inkling of like, whoa, what is this? Like from from Kanye that we're like, this is 
Because Slow Jams was great, right? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and Through the Wire, like, yeah, that's very much of, like, of that time. Yeah. But this is, like, the Kanye that we got for the next decade. This Kanye, This like, is, like, a glimpse, like, yeah. whoa, this is, like, really dark. There's something really dark to yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. The production is completely different. Um, this is unlike what he's done before. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, this this was a glimpse into the Kanye that we would get um, for the you know yeah, what? Proceeding decade. Yeah, like let, no, let's let's keep it to flashing lights. Yeah. yeah, like it's not his biggest song, but every time it it gets played in a public tunnel, you can see the real. Con- be, they're like, yes, because yeah. you remember it. Yeah. You remember how when you first started flashing lights, you're like, what? what is-? You didn't know it was Kanye because it yeah. didn't sound like something no. that a rapper would do. And then he came in, and and you're right, like his delivery isn't aggressive and something like that. And this is one of his. It's had like four video clips, remember? Like yeah. it was such an artistic <laughs> song. But, uh, the one I remember was the, the it was just all yeah, slow-mo. Yeah, the and big booty the, chick. The, yeah, the we, big get booty, we get it, you creep, big, <laughs> you're a creep. You're a thirsty dude and you're a creep. The big booty ch- uh, yeah. chick, uh, she uh, puts Kanye, uh, or she opens the boot. You're a creep. <laughs> opens the boot of the car and like uh, he's tied up there. Yeah, yeah, Man, yeah. what a video. <laughs> Again, like, yeah, I mean. It was so hard to do this because we. What were the other ones? I forgot. What do you the mean? other music videos of this? Uh, the the vague one that I remember was the horror show one. You remember the horror show one? And then there was one. It was very weekend esque, where it was never not Kanye. It was a girl, like a just a girl, uh, like smoking black and white. You remember yeah, that one? That concept yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. There was another. Yeah. I can't remember. But just how many video clips do you have, bro? <laughs> Relax, guys. Like, I reckon. I reckon maybe. There was one that crossed the line, which is why he had to do another one. I, don't know, <laughs> I think so. But at that time, maybe he was like, "Dude, the, 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 the one with the chick like killing him did cross yeah, the line too." Yeah, like there were yeah, a lot of complaints well. on it. There were complaints to that too. Uh, but <laughs> but yeah. this is this, this is this is like the complaints. Everything it added to oh, it was a, great a lot song. of our allure to it. We're like, this is so dark. This that, is like, this is like it's just darker. that be, a lot of these so- like like a lot of these songs. Yeah. It's that first 10 seconds yeah. is so captivating. Like, Flashing Lights is a movie Gets song. You, straight away. Yeah, like you, the synth, and you know it's being played on a keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I can see someone turn, like, I, yeah. I can feel it. Sounds so good. And this is the prelude to, like, um, 808s and Heartbreak, which I love that album, man. I Very underrated it. album. Loved it. Loved it. Didn't love it the first time, but yeah, then I just that's, loved that's it. A lot of people lo- have that story there. Didn't love it the first time. Didn't love it. The, like, when we first then heard really it. Really loved it. That's the thing. Like, when we first heard it, for me, I was like, this sounds completely different. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then like some songs were starting to catch on to me. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, this is really different and really good actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's just like. It, I think it was of a time. It was of the time, but it it also time. sort of it, that style is what Kanye went with for the next decade. It was. It was. It and also was pivotal. Probably. And if you look at those songs. They sound like flashing lights a bit, a, a bit, little bit. A little bit. A little bit. A that's bit. why I'm saying flashing lights was a glimpse what would come after oh man so much memories from like the songs in that time and i think when you look back i don't have a single eminem one which is like a travesty um i had uh forget about dre like you can just keep and going that, yeah, that was another song <laughs> i, I, I was wanting to put this in my list you can just keep going because um, forget about dre to me has one of the best flows of any rap oh, yeah. song it was great it was just insane it was great there's also like uh, yeah, Superman. Like all, all, all of Eminem's discology. But you, like, you know what? Like bringing up all these songs, and especially when you told me about that specific memory yeah, yeah. at school, I'm starting to remember now where I've heard all. Like where I where yeah, I was yeah, yeah. when, when first I first heard, heard them. them. And I think, and that's insane to me. That's that that's blowing my mind. Actually, that's right now. <laughs> that's usually what you, like music does. But like yeah. I think that's such a vivid time for us, at least specifically. But yeah, look, that was our top five, which I think. Uh, is good good spectrum. There were more. There were more hip hop than R and B, right? Yeah, in, in yeah, our yeah. list. And well. Like, well, look for me. Like, for me, I love R and B as well, and I could do another. Like, You're not top a sensitive five with dude, R&B. bro. You're not I had JT in there. But like, look, uh, if we could do another R and B one, I could do that as well. Because yeah, like yeah, yeah. That, during that era, R and B was f- on top. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Were, they were firing on all cylinders as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, like this, just this era was defined by. M- I guess my love for the beats and for the super producers and how everything was made for me. It was just the creativity that came from this era, I think is unmatched. And, and look, you know, a lot of our generation gets accused. You're right. As I said before, that of like, you know, having you know, rose colored glasses for this era, having a nostalgia, but 
for me, I've thought about this for a long time, and mm. it's just, it's not that. Like, like, yes, there's a lot, lot of nostalgia that we see things differently through, but for me, you're never going to get those producers again, right? Like the, nah, the era of the time, super yeah. producer, you're not going to get that because you look at the landscape right now, you buy beats off YouTube for like 20 bucks, right? <coughs> That's the landscape. Yeah. And it's so different now. Like, like I don't see the industry pushing super producers like that. Like that, that that was just the product of its time. Yeah. Right. I don't think that that's how that's right. It was, right. It, like, it was a product of its time and it was a great time. Was I can't amazing. wait to go to, back to the nineties. Cause I think that was also a great oh, time. Very yeah. different, very unique, but nineties to me would be completely different. Oh yeah. Like if we're just yeah. talking general music, because yeah. At that age, I was too young, I guess, to listen but, to. But here's the thing: to so be into I was that listening much. that stuff in the 2000s, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah it depends. What My you 90s like. is completely different, so we could do that as well. But that would yeah. be a completely different. Uh, anyway, guys, let us know what you think. Did you like some of the song choices that you did? What What were you listening in that time? 2000 yeah. to 2010. Look, if, if it's not the same genre, you know, put some comments below. Let us know. Cause Come at me if you don't like my top five, man. That's sure. my top five. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what you guys got against Ja Rule, man? Thug, thug love it, man. Thug love. That's where I draw the line. Ja. Ja's where I draw the line. Hey, man, you are listening to Mesmerize like the rest of them, right? I don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, man. All right, guys. Um, don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of content. Leave yeah. some comments below. And we'll see you next time.